deep. Um, Chris, did you want to say what you have to say? Summary, sure. Um, we uh, did go through all the channels to investigate the um, stormwater permit jurisdiction for private development on Wilson's Point. And our conclusion was that it is an unregulated activity that there is no jurisdiction on the MS4 permit for that activity and the coastal area, coastal management zone, coastal management act doesn't um, apply either. So, well, it could go to the stormwater permit, but, but obviously it's not regulated. So I guess like a lot of situations, um, you know, that water would get to the sound anyway, with or without a pipe whether it was a pavement road leak off down an embankment or so it's really a, the issue in, in my mind is, is how do you deal with any potential pollutants that are getting into that stormwater? You know, the quality of the stormwater depends upon the activities that are taking place in that residential development or commercial, if that's the case, or roadway with leaky oil or whatever. So. At any rate, um, you know, there's there is definitely um, a need for better education and outreach, and the Long Island Sound Futures Fund round is open right now. If people want to put in for some kind of an education and outreach program, to uh, NRWA talked a few years ago about, go about doing a residential stormwater audit program for the Silver Mine watershed, but it would be nice to do something on the coastline. Um, so that's my take on it. Anybody has any questions? Let me know. Yeah. Chris, what about the construction stormwater general permit, which, yeah. which I guess is triggered when there's one acre? Is it one acre of disturbance or how? So if, if you put in a, a, a storm drain along a road, and, and is, it, is that stormwater construction general permit not, not applicable or? Well, that was the, the notice that I got from Karen Allen, and she does stormwater construction as well as MS4 mm -hmm. permits, is that that permit was not applicable to this situation. I don't know how much, if there was an actual quantification of the disturbance. I mean, if she said hundreds of feet of pipe, that would add up, but probably not be over an acre anyways. But... Uh, so it's 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 an acre of disturbance is 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 what triggers that yeah. stormwater general yeah. permit. Yeah. Chris, can I ask a question? Um, sure. So we actually NRWA is moving ahead with that project, and we are partnering with a sustainability group in Greenwich, and then there's there there are a bunch of different groups who want to create like a coastal alliance. So we're having a Zoom meeting on May nineteenth to get it started. Would you be able to just answer some questions about just to help us focus how we could do this um sure. you know we're focused yeah. on septics we're, we're focused on trying to get people to maintain their septics but i this is making me think we, we should broaden it and we should talk to you to understand how to do that yeah I, I actually brought this up to nicole davis at save the sound this morning and i said uh, why don't you guys apply for a for a for a grant from the Futures Fund to do something like this? Her response was was jokingly, "Okay, write the application on on our behalf, and we'll do it." So I know, you know I know. Might be worth, if you want to partner with uh, Save the Sound, they'd probably be willing to put some resource into it. It is a okay. it is a tedious application process to get. It, I feel fund. like we could take out we could. Well, anyway, we can talk about it. We don't have to have yeah, sure. this. You have my I'll, contact information. I'll follow up with you. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Now, uh, Steve, did did you and um, Dick ever make your trip? A field trip? Uh, the trip to uh, check on the effluence. No. Okay. No. no, that wasn't that wasn't planned, but we certainly can. Good. Okay, because um, one of the issues we had with 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 the um, letters that were flying back and forth 
is there was no documentation of pollution. And it was just a statement that there was pollution coming out, but no documentation of it. And the fact that we alerted DEEP to this and there were, I think Chris can verify this, numerous emails that went back and forth in regards to this. Um, there really is nothing we can do at this point, except possibly somehow or other come up with different legislation or somehow or other have city ordinances changed. And it would require that. Uh, am I correct, Chris? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And these new makes that to go through legislation. Do these complaints right. stem from just one person? Pardon? Do these complaints come from just one person? Yes. Yes. It sure. really depends on how you define pollution, because all stormwater has some pollution, but is it to the level that, or is it be any different if there was no pipe? That's that's the other question. Right, and and even if it rains. The rain has pollution. Sure. So it's where do you draw the line? And well, that's that's something I want to get into later on when we get into uh, working on a mission statement. Um, shellfish guys, did you um, have anything you want to add about the Department of Transportation? Did you get any more um, communication from them? Um, there was a lead abatement. Uh, email that they sent. I don't know who was all copied on that, but they will be with us next hour, as will Ms. Jones from uh, Wilson Point. Okay. Jeff? Well, regardless of whether there's a, a pollution, there's identified pollution coming out of the storm drain, is it not a, maybe a reasonable thing to think about a, a city ordinance that would, that would provide for some sort of overview of the pro of private private drainage systems, if, if what Chris is saying is correct, that these aren't regulated, um, is, is it, uh, forgetting about whether there's pollution, just, just as, a, as a way of, of, of including these systems into a, into a review and monitoring, would, would, would there be any value in proposing a, a city ordinance to, to s somehow re require, if, if you're in a private neighborhood and a private street and you're building a storm drain system, or, or maintaining or replacing one, you need some sort of city approval, or is that just not not a practical thing to think about? I think I think it's a good idea because it's still discharging into public water, and because it's discharging into public water, the public should have something to say about that. Or just have, have, have a review a review of it. It's subject to, to review by the engineering bureau to, to, to meet certain standards. And what, whether, whether the city can do that in a private neighborhood, in a, on a private street, I, I don't know what the, legal, the legality of that would be. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard to figure out if we could talk to somebody. Yeah, the, the complication comes in when you have a situation like this where you have an existing neighborhood and then you add something later, retrofit a new drainage system. It's easier to regulate things when you're building a new development, but you're, you can tell your, your ordinance any way you want. Yeah. Are, are there examples of other, the other municipalities that have stormwater ordinances that, that address this situation? I can't answer that, but um, the people at Yukon Clear probably would. Dave Dixon mm -hmm. might be a good person mm -hmm. to worry on that. And possibly Greenwich does. Yeah, if anybody. Louise? I mean, this is sort of tangential, but I've recently gotten a couple of uh, emails, sort of like the letter from, from that woman that are about a lot of pesticides being sprayed right on the edge of the water and, and wanting to know, you know, what are, what are the regulations in Norwalk about spraying pesticides and, and herbicides and, um, right close to, to wetlands and sand and the beach. And um, so I don't know, is that something we also would, that seems like an ordinance because I don't think there are any, there's there no are. restrictions. Yeah, um, so there's just throwing that in as maybe possibly 
in the same family of concern and maybe needs an ordinance. I, I don't know. And, and Joe, whose juris is whose jurisdiction? Which department of the city would would be responsible for that? Is that um, zoning and planning, or yeah, the, the drainage is public works DPW. Okay, but the spraying could be under the health department. Yeah, and there could be a, an issue with state enabling legislation to right. enable local ordinances too. There's multiple multiple layers here, Louise. It's really I don't think we can do pesticide ordinance locally. Isn't there a preemption? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's state. Yeah, it has to be done in the state. Yeah, yeah. there may be a, a state enabling legislation for certain activities, but that's yeah, it probably would be the state. I mean, you know, we've pushed through two years ago, worked on raising awareness around trying to address this yeah. preemption issue, and it was really even even Bill Lucy was like that bill just. I don't know if people didn't understand it or they didn't like the wording. I mean, it's a really hard thing to, we can't do anything locally about pesticides. So I mean, I'm just saying this because you hit a brick wall when you start talking about preemption. Um, people just, that's just not something they wanna work with. So if anybody has ideas, like I really think that's an important thing for us to focus on, but. Well, what, what we did before, um, I actually made contact when we were discussing this with golf courses. Yeah. I actually made yeah. contact with the golf course and said, are you guys using any of these pesticides? And they said, no, we stopped using them. And I said, well, do you realize it's registered that you had a purchase of this? And they said, yeah, we, we heard that, we know that, but we aren't using it when we found out what it was all about. And, and particularly in the, the one golf course, um, one of the board members was um, the brother of a lobsterman. So it made a big difference with him. Yeah, I mean, that kind of outreach, that's the only thing we can do at this point, but yeah. it would be, yeah. Uh, the, John? The pesticide free New Canaan probably have some experience with this type of stuff, so. Or River uh, Yeah, yeah, I know that those women, that's a good Joe? idea. John, go ahead. Yeah, I put I, I a life in me, can't fathom why deep wouldn't have some kind of controlling factor over discharge, whether it's runoff or whatever, especially if it's coming out of a pipe and it's accumulating, at least have some monitoring type of regulations. I know in, in the construction business, and we look at applications all the time, we have for new stuff, obviously, requirements that people must, that mandate that they must must meet. The old sometimes is a, there's grandfathering a, a, into effect, but if someone tears down a house or rebuilds a house, they have to find, they have to have a reserve field and, and, and percolation tests done and if they check the drainage. If the, a new house is being built or an addition gets put on, it's water recapture onto the property and, and proper filtration has to be done. I don't, and, and especially that's going into the sound, What's, what's wrong with Save the Sound or any of the other organizations that we're, we're attuned to and lined up with? Why did it, why the, why are people closing their eyes to these type of things? You know, I know it exists all over, but this seems to be a high profile one that we, do we close our eyes to this and everything else? Or do we stop, have to start somewhere just to do rudimentary testing, if nothing else, to prove the fact that there's not harmful things taking place. Now you don't do it in the winter, you would do it in the spring and maybe in the, in the fall, but I, 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 I think it's something that we should really consider as water quality, if that's what truly we're all about to uh, explore. Steve? Yeah, so to uh, follow on to John's uh, good statement here. So if it's currently unregulated based on uh, a correct design, assuming that the design is correct. Would it also be unregulated should it be found that there's a roof drain attached to it? Or if there, worst case scenario, there's black water attached to it? Good point. Well, if there's, if there's black water attached to it, then it becomes a problem that 
the health department um, can open the door on. How about a roof drain? Roof drain is still a storm drain. It's still storm water. So unless it's getting something off of a roof that uh, we're unaware of, um, I don't think so. I, I, I think John's point is valid. Um, but we have to, what has to be done is we have to establish the line in the sand. What, when do we, when and what do we monitor? And realistically, to what purpose? Um, we know, for example, we've got lots of storm drains that are still spewing out E. coli. Now, they'll continue to doing that. We've had, with Dick Harris, when he had the interns working, and they, they did studies because we had issues, and they followed up when we recognized and found an area that was problematic, it was addressed and dealt with. John, it wasn't dealt with. It wasn't. There are storm drains that are still doing it. And it's because... I'm not saying they're not be, it's not continuing to happen, but it, in isolated case, cases where specific drains were an issue, they were dealt with and remediated. In many cases, yes. Yeah. Norwalk Harbor, just give you an example. Since 2006, when they started keeping records, there have been 50 repairs done on the harbor itself. About 20, 30% of those were found by Harbor Watch, and it works as a partnership. They are being repaired, but right. they got to know where they are. But, there, but Dick, are there still storm drains that are still producing high levels of E. coli? Uh, I would say there will always be, but the number certainly has been reduced greatly. Yeah. Would know, it be that's, what, that's what we have to take a look at. Yeah, you need to know if it's an illicit discharge or if there just happens to be a lot of animal activity, roofs that get a lot of bird poop and Correct. dogs. And the, the city has a brand new camera truck that they've been using on these things, which is very sophisticated. And uh, there's very little that escapes the eye of that camera. So they've been able to pinpoint them when Harbor Watch or somebody else finds a general area where there's a high bacteria count. Does it make sense for there to be testing at, at that outfall that we were talking about by Harbor Watch? I mean, if they could do that, and then, you, and then if you found if, if you point them in that direction, they will do that, yes. Yeah, but the, what do you want tested, Louise? Just the bacteria? Water, the water quality at that outfall that they're talking that, that about. When you're talking is. water quality, um, start off the basics, just E. coli. Yeah, isn't E. coli an indicator species? I, I don't know. You that's, guys that's, all, that's all it is. And in reality, it's time that the city spends the money and starts to do identification of the type of E. coli. Where, what is its source? Especially where we have constantly reoccurring problems. And if we find that it is not anthrop anthropogenic, but it is avian or other mammal, there's not much we can do about it. You know, Joe, it, it brings me back to people who keep making statements with no foundation. This guy, Rick Reardon, who had, had uh, PCBs coming out of the landfill, we tested it, there weren't any. We had the other guy that runs the, uh, who makes the analyzers say there was lead in the harbor, we tested it, there wasn't any. And Correct. It, it's, it's too bad to spend the time on one man's big mouth. And see, that concerns me in this case. Yeah, and the, the state of the art of the microbial source tracking is not really very, even if you have the right PCR techniques, and it's still very time consuming, takes lots and lots of data to make sound conclusions. So I, I wouldn't expect that to happen very quickly. No, or I sending people out to do track down could have a better, better outcome. In other words, we just, you can discover the, the sources if you want. And see. And Lu Louise, if, if there's herbicides or pesticides being used, um, we could test for it. 
or, or it, the testing could be done. We don't have a budget for it. You well, know, I mean, it's just, there's just that it is being sprayed right by the coast. That was what people were asking. You know, is there, is there any way to, to restrict that? And I know the answer is no. I'm just putting it out there as part of the well, runoff the, problem. The, the answer isn't necessarily no. Um, in my correspondence with the Homeowners Association, if they were told they were doing something wrong, and it was harmful to the environment, they, they told me that they would make a change and that they would alert the homeowners. Now, that has an impact. Now, whether they would do it or not, we don't know unless there was testing done and we found it was there. But I hate to see, like Dick said, I, I, I'd hate to see a whole bunch of people running around doing work when a claim is being made and there's no verification of it. You know, if, if they're spraying, the average person has a cell phone that you can videotape what the spraying is. Yeah, so there's, they, we know they're spraying. It's just that, that their private citizens and their neighbors are contacting me to say, what can we do about these people spraying right by the water? And I mean, my answer to them is, you know, call the city and, and express your concern, but that, that there's not, nothing that we can do. Is that? Well, is that right? it, some chemicals that they spray could be harmful and it could be harmful to the environment. And yeah, I'm which, sure they are. <laughs> in which case, DEEP could get involved um, because it is discharged into, into a, a water supply. And especially with shellfish beds, the other, the other agency could be the Department of Aquaculture. So if it were tick spray, for example, would that be something DEEP could get involved with? It would depend on what the spray was. Okay. See, when you say tick spray, there's a lot of things they can be using. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Joe, is it possible for you to get a modest budget so that we can do some of this stuff? Uh, that's one of the reasons we want to do... Um, a mission statement and then start working on a report that we can share with the city and start asking for these things. Yeah. You're not talking huge dollars. Well, I don't want to start small. <laughs> it's if, if we start a, a really decent water monitoring program, like a lot of other communities have here in New England, as well as other states, um, and especially with shellfish beds here, we should have them, and we don't. And we should have funds available to do sampling. So like in Louise's case, if you see them spraying for ticks, if they don't wanna tell you what they were spraying, we can at least grab a sample and have it tested for whatever and then see if it's making it into the outflow. Um, some, of the, some, <clears throat> some of the sprayings won't even last three days in the environment, but others might be much longer. And that's, that's what we need to know. Okay, any, any other questions on that? Okay, we'll come back to that, believe it or not, for better or for worse. Okay, uh, Tom, anything from you and the health department? Uh, no, no update, no news. Okay, and the Harbor Commission, John, anything you wanna share with this auspicious group? Uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to Jeff, let Jeff pine in. <laughs> well, we met with, with uh, DOT. I say we met with them. DOT's yep. team made a presentation at the, to the Harbor Commission meeting. Uh, about the status of their permit application. And um, <laughs> among other questions, uh, we asked about the status of the Eversource project and we were told that, well, <laughs> there's nothing they can share with us about that. Um, did not ask them about the status of Manresa Island, the, the, the proposal to, to work there instead of uh, along uh, South Water Street. So we're, 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 waiting to, to 
make our next comments. And, and as, as you know, we, we, we're doing a turbidity analysis um, with, the, with the, um, the goal of coming up with recommended permit conditions to protect water quality. So we, we've, I say we, but not, it doesn't really include we because I'm not smart enough to do it, but Professor Hart is doing it. And he's looked at the, at the as we've said before, the, the turbidity data, and he's combined that with an analysis of tides, rainfall, um, what, what else, tides and, and rainfall. And then we have the bridge openings that we factored into it as well uh, to try to determine if, if the, the relatively few spikes in turbidity may be caused by, by which factors. Um, and that, that's what we're working on, but that, that's, that's all interesting background stuff. But the significant result of that will be the recommendations that we come up with for permit conditions to protect water quality. And that's what right we're now, working on. Right now, it, it, to me, it seems all convoluted and, and confusing because we have application from DOT and we have another application on top of it from Denaro to do work exactly where they're going to be working without knowing what ultimately the state is going to do and yeah. what ever source is going to do, and it's in that same area. Yes, yes, John, you're right, and that and that that, but John is right that this continues to be extremely complex and and uh, convoluted. We're doing our best to review it, <laughs> but you know that bulkhead construction is not so much a water quality. I don't believe matter uh, to discuss. We're, we're talking, well, although construction impacts to, to, to deal with that bulkhead would, could contribute to turbidity. But yeah, the, the, big, unknown, the big unknown is, is, is the status of the Eversource uh, uh, proposal. I can give you a hint. The, the tunnel, the uh, directional drilling operation is going to be replaced by a tunnel, 51 inch concrete tunnel. It's going to be sent directly across the harbor. The engineering and permitting of that won't even be in place until August of 2022. And the tunnel will not be ready to accept wires until December of 2022. What, what are you talking about, Dick? I'm talking about, I think you're talking about the projects that stalled with that bridge. No, there's, but there's different cable aspects of it. There's the, there's the signal cable and, and uh, for the railroad and then there's, the, then there's the relocation of the electric transmission lines, which will be taken off the elevated, the elevated towers at the police station, dug up down the street to, to, to get to the harbor and then, and then directionally drilled underneath the, the visitor's dock. I believe that's a different project than what you're talking about. You're talking about the permanent signal cables. It's more in, the, the, cable. in the vicinity of the bridge. All I know is what I've been told. Well, I, but that but that's significant, Dick, because we, we we need to sort all this stuff out. The the, the project that, that you evaluated, as as far as we understand, is the temporary signal cables under right near the the, the railroad bridge. Now later on, there's going to be a tunnel that goes underneath that that DOT is going to do. But that's taking place upstream of the Strafalino Bridge. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about the, the Eversource project to relocate the electric transmission lines underneath the city's visitor's dock and, and, and into Veterans Park. Well, I understood that was dead. <laughs> if that's dead, then they can't build the railroad, the new railroad bridge. They've got to take the electric lines off the elevated towers over the bridge. Excuse me for, for, for it, we're doing the best we can to review this as, as we have every day since January of 2015. And it's- a, I, and, I just can't believe that there isn't somebody who will tell the truth and, and, give, and, and lay the thing out the way it's supposed to be. It, it's, all, it's all off the 23rd commode, what we hear here and what we hear there, and no firm project is laid out and it well should be by this time. Somebody should know the answers. And all we get is bits and pieces. I, I think you'll find people in agreement in this group. Okay, any, anything else on, on that with uh, Department of Transportation and Health Department? Okay, and the Harbor Commission. Okay, Dick, I don't have anything under old business. Does anybody have anything under old business that I missed? 
Okay, good. Dick, do you want to enlighten this group about the continuing saga of the mitten crab? Uh, I've been monitoring mitten crabs as they've come out of the uh, Housatonic estuary. Uh, the boat captains up there on all the oyster scows have been bringing them up in their dredges, and we've got them trained to bring them into Brown's Marina, where we log them in, get the coordinates, and I put a report together. I think we're about 13 or 14 crabs now. They're still coming in, and nothing seemed to be happening. I'm in contact with the Fisheries Bureau. Everybody's concerned, and I'm also on a on a on a um, um, group that is working at best management practices for the oyster reefs. And I finally called Tessa G G Getches with uh, Sea Grant. And I told her, what are you doing? How can we be going ahead making best management practices when no one's looking at invasives? And that did it. She got on the horn and we next thing I knew, Channel 3 was talking to me, MSNBC was talking to me, and all of a sudden the balloon is going up, the state is worried, the state is putting out more signs and more news because those crabs are now established. And we don't know how far up the river they go. We hear rumors up on the Housatonic that people are finding them. We don't have any crabs to back it up. We hear rumors that they're in the upper Quinnipiac. We don't have any crabs to back that up. And we hear rumors they're also in Lewis Gut. So it would seem to me not only are they established, but if any of this is true, they are spreading. And I've got permission to run some trap lines. I'm trying to get traps now since the dredging is over and the crabs are coming out of the mud to try and see if we can <clears throat> trap them in some of these places. And I'm being helped by Dave uh, Hudson from the Maritime Center. He's going to take over the entire freshwater piece of it and run traps up there. But it's a big problem. It's not a little problem and it's going to be spreading. So Louise, what you have to do is keep your eye on, on the rivers here. I know. And, and you watch the bank. What do you tell, tell us what to look for, Dick. Well, the, the bank problem comes in the cold weather when they burrow in. After they do the mating dance, they burrow into the mud for the cold months. And if there are enough crabs, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands, they'll turn the bank into mud and structures start to fall in. And the Rhine River in Germany has already cost them hundreds of millions of dollars in crab damage. San Francisco Bay, same thing. All of the crabs disappeared out there. We've got them in the Hudson River. Don't seem to be going anywhere. But now we've got them in our area, and we don't know what that means. A lack of predators, a good food supply, and we could be in serious trouble. Our line of defense are black sea bass, black bass, and stripers. Those things will eat them. But beyond that, no one seems to have a plan. So and they're smuggling, them in. they're smuggling the crabs in too, from uh, China and other places. Good that you got it on TV. That's huge, um, Dick. That's amazing. You know, uh, I mean, that's like only got a very short little bit, but hey, it's something we're going to have to be worried about. The, the, the other place I would try and um, do a reach out to would be Trout Unlimited and other fishing groups because they're the ones that might be looking for bait under rocks and in mud banks, so they might pick up on it and get an idea. You know, if this, if this gets into Norwalk Harbor, it has free access to, you know, the Norwalk River, the Silver Mine River, Five Mile River, eventually, if it moves. They are a freshwater crab. Yeah. Do you need funding to do the traps, Dick? What? I've only got... So far, I'm, I'm trying to get my hands on about a dozen traps. And we're, we're scrounging around. We're going to buy them if we can find them. But the problem is we can't find any. Everybody seems to be sold out. So I've got a couple of leads going. But I, as of yet, I don't have the traps I need. Well, let us hey. know if we can help you with that in our WA. Putting the word out and getting me some traps. Would yeah. Be yeah. A and Dick, lot. that's my point. Do you have a copy? Can you get a, a copy of, of that? Um, uh, the Channel 3 um, show um, piece. Yeah. Yeah, get it to, my, to to Louise and we can post it on our website at least. Yeah, send it to me. Oh, I don't have a copy of it, no, but we can probably find somebody that does. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look for it. What was it? What channel was it? That was Channel 3 and it was two nights ago. And then MNSB, 
MSNBC was day before yesterday. MSNBC? Is that what yes. it was? Okay. Channel 6, WVIT also carried it in the morning. Did they? Yes. <laughs> That's an NBC affiliate. Dave Hudson is storing all the crabs in the Maritime Center as a catalog and a library full of crabs. And so far, we've been sending them all over there. Dick, I just, I just had a thought, and it's a scary thought. I just hope that they have them in isolated tanks. And oh, they're all dead, Joe. They're all dead. OK. All, all in alcohol. OK. They can climb out of anything. Yeah, I, I would assume that. But also, if, if you have gravid females, the eggs could um, disappear and go down a drain and make it out into the harbor here. So it's, um, I, I, I know the plumbing at the aquarium fairly well. OK, anything else for Dick on mitten crabs? Okay, uh, I asked about mission statements, whether we need to keep it as is or whether we revise it. Um, there's, there's several things, both Jeff and Tom had copies of um, mission statements and I think Tom's was the most recent and I think it's a good mission statement. Uh, but what Jeff did is he also sent along a report. And I don't know when the last time the Water Quality Committee wrote a report. And according to the mission statement, we are supposed to report to Harbor Commission, Shellfish Commission, the mayor, DPW, and I can't remember what else. <laughs> And if we did a report and, and brought up issues like testing, having a budget for testing, uh, encouraging um, requirements for inspection of storm sewers and stuff like that, we could put that in a report, distribute it among the appropriate departments and hopefully affect change. Does anybody have a problem with that? Well, that was easy. Jeff? Well, I don't have a, a problem with it, but you know, it's uh, the, the committee itself, and, and pardon me because we've been working on this since 1990, the committee itself doesn't have any authority. It's, it's right. not established in the city code. There's no authorizing statute. It's a committee that was formed at the recommendation of the Harbor Management Commission in 1990. And, and I think you all know the reason it was formed. It was because there were, there were, it, well, there were political issues involved, frankly. And, and there, there were, there were uh, finger pointing about the management of the wastewater treatment plant. And it was felt that the, uh, that, that the, waste, the Harbor Commission felt that there were other sources of potential pollution than the wastewater treatment plant. And that led to the, investigation of the storm drains. So the, the, the role of the committee was, was always to, to look at, discuss and, and evaluate pollution issues or, or complaints and then, and then make recommendations to the agencies that have some authority to do something about, the, about it. And so it was essentially, it, it was formed, at, it, it, it's just, a, I don't wanna say it's an ad hoc committee, but th there is no, there is no authority that the committee has other than, than um, the authority that's in the Harbor Management Plan, which, 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 which is the, the, the mission statement you read, Joe, is, it's not written as a mission statement, but it's what the committee is supposed to, is, is anticipated to do. Correct. Uh, so I, you know, I, I and then we, and when we started, there were representatives from planning and zoning and from the wa Waste wa uh, Water Pollution Control Authority and now it's left with, with Harbor Commission and Shellfish Commission and, and Tom representing the health department. But the, but the committee's charge and Chris, was always- And Chris and Louise. I mean, 
we're, yeah, but, we're, but those aren't city agencies. Uh, yeah, no. Chris, Chris, Chris is doing a good job by, by participating from deep. That, that, that's, that's clear. That hasn't taken place before. But, 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 the, but the committee's role was to make recommendations to the entities. The committee doesn't do anything itself in terms of taking action. It was to make recommendations to the, to the agencies and departments that do. So I think we could craft up, I mean, we can't do it for today, but, but we, we, could, we could craft a, a revised mission statement consistent with what you know, was in the Harbor Management Plan and have it for discussion next, uh, next month for, 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 for adoption perhaps. But it, get, it gets into the whole thing about what, what do you do when someone makes a complaint like at Wilson Point? You know, is it the committee's job to, 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 to retain someone to test it? Or does the committee, th th those are the things we have to have to consider, in my, in my right. opinion. There's a whole bunch of things. I would agree, and there are going to be more and more of them. But making a recommendation for, you know, one thing, making a recommendation or looking to see what the city has in terms of a stormwater ordinance that addresses private systems, that, 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 that that's a... That's a valid project that we could work on and make a recommendation to the city, but it requires some investigation. Right. I agree. And I don't, I don't know how many other, I'm off the topic, of course, other private residential areas there are that adjoin the, the harbor and, and, and potentially the same situation as at Wilson Point or, or, or you know, Bell Island, for example, is that... Are those all city streets or are they and, and over on Marvin Beach in those areas? I, I, I don't know if, if, yeah, those are city if Wilson Point is is unique in, 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 in that regard. We, we, we have can, discussed that with DPW. Yeah, well, we, we can craft it for, for, for discussion next month. We can craft a, a, a mission statement with respect, but but the Harbor Commission and the Shellfish Commission they have statutory authorities, right? And and and, uh, and and city code authorities. The committee is an advisory group that that's of, of volunteers that uh, that make that makes recommendations and, and looks at looks at, at issues. I'm sorry to be talking so much. Uh, that's just. <laughs> But I remember when this was started in 1990. <laughs> it's only 31 years ago, and it did a lot of. It's done a lot yeah, of good work. Thanks for reminding me how old we are. <laughs> That's right, and and one of the representatives on the committee was from the faculty of Brian McMahon High School. That was you, Joe. Yeah, I know that. I know. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah, and that, and I was the one that made the comment about testing the water upstream from the sewage treatment plant and downstream from the sewage treatment plant and halfway out in the harbor between the sewage treatment plant and Half Pastor Beach right. so that we could find out if it was a treatment plant or not. Yes, and at that time, the city didn't even have a map showing stormwater outfalls into the harbor, as, no. I, as I recall. We That's developed that map through the interns that the Harbor Commission and the Shellfish Commission funded along with the Scallon Foundation. They, yeah. Jeff, they had a map, but it was missing over 200 pipes. Oh, yeah. So that's... <laughs> we, we, we have a map, yeah, right. Yeah. I can't get a hold of a map in Ridgefield. I mean, I don't think it's that uncommon to have no map. Yeah. Maybe it's there somewhere, <clears throat> but I haven't been able to get it. It's, it's something that Managing stormwater is, it's, it's a very dicey question. Um, if you don't manage it, you have flooded streets. If you do manage it, you're getting whatever runs onto the street and then into the storm drain. Now, when they built the towns, they often built the roads near water because it was flatter ground. And unfortunately, uh, whatever comes off of cars and whatever comes off of um, uh, the land near the roads, you end up getting in stormwater. Now, mm -hmm. once upon a time here in Norwalk, all the stormwater went to the sewage treatment plant. And that was scary. 
That was very scary. And it overflowed on numerous occasions. And luckily over a period of time, some of us are old enough to remember the black streaks going down the middle of roads from the oil that came off of cars, motorcycles, trucks, and so forth. Well, we don't see that anymore, but there is other stuff coming off and that's what we have to worry about. So how we can work this into mission statement and slash the report. Uh, I'd like to see a report done possibly this summer and get it out and see what we can do. Yeah. If everybody's in favor of that. And, and, and we'll, we'll work on a draft, uh, you know, an, not a, a new mission statement, but a, you know, a, a clarification of what the mission statement is for, for, for the members to look at next month. Yep, we'll tweak it. Anything else anybody want to add? Jeff? Uh, on, on this topic or, or anything else having to do with the committee? All of the above. Well, of course, the, this, we still have the un, uh, haven't made progress on the Norwalk River Watershed Initiative reestablishment. Um, no. Nope. You know, and it, it's, it's May now, um, and this is several years, so we should continue to try to to push to push that uh, at least to have a at least to have a couple meetings um, yeah. um, and then Alexis and I did have a meeting to talk about that with Chris Sullivan so it, it really is in his shop at this point from the Southwest Conservation District to, to organize a meeting and he said he was interested and willing to do it I think he was a little bit held up on what the scope of the meeting should be. And we just, we will just let him know that member updates is enough that other things will come to play. Yeah. We've got a lot of projects. My mind, Pond in the middle of the Dick my mind, this thing is Harbor Watch. Say, in my mind, this thing isn't gonna go until you have somebody who wants to be a leader and do that job. And so far it's everybody kind of pecking around the edges. There is no leader. Well, Southwest Conservation District has, has offered to do it. I think that Chris, like I said, is just bogged down with other work. He's doing a watershed plan in the farm river and the technicalities of what he needs to do. But we've tried to assure him that it's not anything other than organizing the meeting and banging the gavel and we'll take care of it from there. So it's gonna happen. It's just another reminder for me to give him a call and, and, and remind him that it needs to happen. But would it, would it be all, all right if, if we call them as well, say, say a representative of the Harbor Management Commission, just to? Yeah, I'd start with an email probably, but yeah, sure. I, I, I may talk about that. We might do that. Um, yeah, sure. And then I, I mean, I we could offer to help because, you yeah. know, we could yeah. offer to help in some way. That's what I was thinking. We could offer yeah. to, to take some of the burden. That right. offer is much more well received, I think, sure. And then two, two other questions. Louise, what's the status of your 319 grant application that you were working on for, for the outreach from Ridgefield and whatever you were planning to do up there? We haven't heard anything. We, we, we got the email from Deep that we should look at um, the Long Island Sound Futures Fund for maybe part of it. And that's just another grant. So I, that deadline's coming up in May. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I have a, a, a goal of trying to do that. It's just like, you know, <laughs> hard to get everything done, but we just <laughs> haven't heard, we haven't heard yet on the 319. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the, the last question my, my, I still have for, for what it's worth is we still don't know what the status is of deeps issuance, reissuance of the, of the uh, discharge permit to the wastewater treatment plant and have to assume that there's some sort of negotiation going on, um, uh, and I guess we'll wait and see when someone feels that the need to tell us what, what's going on. Did, did somebody contact Ann Strout? I think that was the last last month. That's what I recommended that somebody should contact her. I, I contacted somebody and I can't remember who. Chris yeah. and I was told oh. no, they did get the permit. Well, I, talked get to, to, I talked to Ralph. And they've received the permit? No. Yeah, so that, that, that's the question. What, what, what's, well, anyway, we'll, we'll, maybe, maybe we'll proceed with, with ask, asking the, the person you mentioned, Chris. It, sure. should, it should be easy to somebody to just say what's going on, uh, but, but I yeah. guess not. 
I'll put it on my list of things to do. Yeah. Th th thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I also, Chris, you recommended um, the We Contact and Straup about, um, I was asking about the um, school sisters wastewater treatment plant that always yep. shows up in the way. And, and it turns out that, that it, there's just a lag in the reporting that that was, you're right, that their system was connected to sewage. And I guess the integrated water quality report just doesn't show that update. Oh, well, so, that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had heard about the pipe when it was put in, and that's why I was surprised. But yeah, so so that I don't know why it still shows up in the water quality reports that as a problem, but I don't think it is a problem anymore. So right. that got cleared up. I wanted to, have to let them know. I think it's Rebecca now who does that report. Anything else? Okay, any questions about or corrections about last month's um, minutes? Steve? Yeah, please, under harbor management, not a big deal, but <clears throat> it addresses uh, Mr. Romano and Mr. Stedman, but uses my first name. It should just be changed to Mr. Bardish for consistency. Not doctor? No. Okay. Any others? Can I have a motion to approve? Steve? Can I have a second? Second. I'll see. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? Okay. I'm not a voting member, so ever, don't, none of the above. Then the beauty of this is we're almost right on time. Next meeting is June 3rd. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. A second? <laughs> All in favor? That'll do it. And moderator, uh, the DOT people still don't have emails. Um, so I resent the entire list out again. I can tell you what I have here, unless what was put in is wrong. Um, this is what I have for that meeting. Uh, T. Pramer at AOL.com, uh, Jeffrey Stedman at ATT.net, Jeff Stedman at ATT.net, Saltswork at gmail.com, telsec1 at aol.com, pjkj1756 at gmail.com. Now, there should be a list of 20 that basically end in ct.gov. None, uh, none of that is in here. Yes. Is, this, is this Anthony or, or no, Jeff? This is, so Anthony is going to do, he, he's taking over for that meeting. Does, did you send that list to, to him? I did. There's a, there's a list for water quality. There's a list for shellfish, which you just read, and there's a third list with all the DOT names. Okay. So yeah, the okay. So shellfish, which is 7:15 today. I'm seeing here. Yeah, none of none of the ct.gov is in there. But look, I'll give him a quick call once this ends and see if he has that uh, available. Uh, at least at the worst case scenario, they can join the meeting and all get promoted up to the panel. Um, as long as they have the link. So um, I, let me, I'll, I'll talk to him. If you've emailed Anthony, it should be fine. Okay. I, I, it, this is the secretary. I just checked my email while you were talking. I did get another invitation from you. It's 701. So mm -hmm. something did go through. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that- It I just think went I, through I, the long li list. I added you on the shellfish list, but they're not sending that third list out. Oh, okay. All right, see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so Tom, if you said it to Anthony, it should be okay. I'll confirm with him off offline, but it should be okay. Hey, that was okay. seven fifteen, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Dick, I, Dick, are you still there? Dick, Dick Harris. Yeah, I'm here. I'm going to give you a call in a few minutes if that's all right. I have something else to ask you about. Okay. Thank, Thank you.
Thanks, everyone. Good meeting, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.